Let me ask you this. Sure. Your new back attacks instructional. First of all, awesome. Yeah. Uh, second of all, you, you drop nice. a, <laughs> you drop a lot of fascinating insights in there. But you quote uh, Galileo out of all people in saying that you can't teach a man anything; you can only help him find it within himself. So we talked about how to start in jujitsu. What about if we zoom out even more and how do you learn how to learn? How do you optimize the learning process? I I don't know the answer to that, but I can tell you what I like to do. And I would say like, I can't step one. I don't, I'm not, maybe this is a little bit easier for me because, you know, I've, I've never had a ton of friends, honestly. I've, you know, I've got my close friends and people that I know, but I, I've n never had tons and tons of people. So I spent a lot of time, you know, thinking. And anyway, uh, I can't, I can't control you. I can't control anybody else. I, you know, I, uh, um, all I can, I want to take my, I guess it's a Marcus Aurelius thing. It's like, you know, I guess the trick to life is figuring out what's in our control and what's not and focusing on things that are in our control, I guess. And uh, so step one is figuring out both internally and then also out in, in the world as it, as it pertains to jiu-jitsu, what is actually in my control and what is not. Like passing someone's guard is not in your control. People think it is, it ain't. If I can't just do an activity and be unchecked, then it ain't in my control entirely. I can always breathe. I can always, um, you know, be calm. I can always, no matter whether I'm concerned or not concerned, have whatever you want to call it, nerves. You know, I I can step forward across the line and say, I will, I will face the challenge ahead. That is all entirely. No one can stop me from doing that. That's entirely me. I control, and that's why I know that every single time that I walk into the ring, I will walk in and out of there with my head held high because there's, I I will fight with everything that I have. I can't promise that I'll win. I would say I take that same first principles you mentioned last time we talked, you know, with uh, Elon and uh, the importance of that and going, what are the first principles? And I guess to come back, a lot of times, in my opinion, the things that people think are the basics are not the basics. You can't learn. If you think you're reasoning for first principles, but you're actually like level six, you're actually like layers up, you're making so many, there's so many baked in assumptions to what's going on that you're going to struggle to understand why anything is actually happening internally, externally, you name it. So I guess what I would start when it comes to learning is first principles and trying to understand what's going on, but then also simple things first. I can control my posture. I can control my breathing. No one can stop me from doing that. I can control where I place my frames. I can control where I place my limbs. I can move my feet. I can develop the ability to do these things better, of course, and I do that through practice, through drilling, through watching people. I've been incredibly fortunate in my time in martial arts to train with many of my heroes, yeah. to train with many of the people that I looked at and I was like, that guy is amazing. I want to train with this person. Like Stephen Thompson, Kenny Florian, George St. Pierre, Raymond Daniels, Faraz Zahabi, you know, I mean, like Bruno Frazada, Marcelo Garcia, all, you know, all of these guys that are just unbelievable. And I go, well, they're moving in a way that's different. Well, how do I do that? Well, sometimes you can ask them and they can tell you directly. Other times people, part of the genius of what they do is that it's intuitive and maybe they don't think and understand and see the world the same way that I do. That was something that I experienced with Marcelo. Um, he's amazing. But in in a different way than his, it just, we see things fundamentally differently. We experience the world differently. It seems to me that we do. Um, and again, that, that taught me a really important lesson because I was wanting when I trained there to have someone go, hey, Ryan, do this, 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 and this, and, and that's how it works. And I was mm -hmm. like, all right, because that's how I understood martial arts at the time. Um, I wasn't ready to have someone tell me like, hey, um, it feels a little bit like this and I just kind of do it, which is kind of what Marcelo would do at the time as he was less experienced as a teacher, but that is what he was doing. I was completely, I couldn't separate in my mind performance and understanding. I thought that if I understand, I could do it. And I would also wonder, I would also struggle sometimes to wonder why I couldn't execute things that I thought I understood mm. and why guys like Marcelo were just so elemental. I mean, in like the like lightning, wind, like that type of thing, like it's just so in touch with what they wanted, with, with their capabilities. They could summon their powers at will. I couldn't always do that. And I guess, so recognizing that there was more than one way to the top of the mountain. And also I had a lot of science, but I didn't have a lot of art. Or I had some science, I should say, but I didn't have a lot of art. 
meeting people like Marcella taught me and then Josh Waitskin, actually brilliant guy, uh, chess champion, um, former owner, maybe owner of uh, Marcella's Academy, really great friend. I think he has a book on learning. He does, yeah, The Art of Learning, actually. The Art of Learning, yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he knows a thing or two about it, but a uh, great guy. And anyway, he, he sat me down one time and was like, look, man, you're, you're doing this wrong. You're missing what, they're missing the genius, the brilliance that's right in front of you. And it, it took me what a long time. What did he mean exactly? That I, I was frustrated with, uh, with my inability to grasp certain things and, and sometimes uh, the teaching style being different, not wrong, just it was, it, 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 was, it, it was tough for me at the time. So what, you were trying to replicate what Marcelo was saying as opposed to understanding the, 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 the fundamentals from which it was coming. Right, I couldn't, see, I couldn't see where it was coming from. And also sometimes I'm like, well, why can't you explain it in the way that I would want you to explain right. it? And he's like, well, why can't I Nobody meet him where will. he's coming from? Yeah. So anyway, it, it was a really important time and lesson, very, very frustrating if I'm honest, but it's not, um, I'm, I'm so thankful for that time. And anyway, uh, you know, I, I so guess- always first principles, trying to understand the basics, and, first starting at the place where you can control things, uh, the, the very basic elements of what you can work with. And then when there's other mentors and teachers to-, to uh, Meet them where they're coming from. Meet them with to the extent that I can. Rather, than, I'm not like again. It's like, why are you not talking to me the way I want you to talk to me, right. as opposed to, hey, where are you coming from? Back to your point. Yeah. But uh, and I know that's not entirely specific, but you know, like if you can focus on that, and back to the whole, you can't teach a man anything. Marcelo didn't teach me anything, but he taught me in so doing, like and other and other people like that to, uh, you know, to find it within. And it's like. Yeah, I guess something else that I've, that I've heard before is that all learning is self-discovery, but all performance is self-expression. Mm. And I always thought that Marcelo was a, a brilliant master of letting what's inside out. He would he was so consistent in his performances. And uh, a lot of times I felt like there was a block there personally, particularly at the end of jiu-jitsu when I was very, very results oriented. And I wasn't, I think, I think my focus was, was not ideal. It was definitely not in the, not in the place that I would like it to be. And uh, whether I would have won more or lost more, hard to say, but I know that I would have performed better if I'd have adjusted that. And anyway, uh, that recognizing that, again, jujitsu, I think I've said it before, jujitsu studies as a science, but expressed as an art. It doesn't matter if you can articulate what you know how to do. What matters is if you can do what you know how to do. It only matters if you're, you know, I guess if you're teaching in a, in a verbal fashion is whether or not you can articulate it. But uh, recognizing the difference between learning on, on an intellectual level or a conceptual level and being able to to translate that into the physical. And I guess like that's been the thing that I feel like fortunate over time in my own academy to be able to kind of fiddle around and learn on my own and practice my students. And, you know, sometimes I struggle to have great training partners. Like when I say great training partners, I mean other world-class people to spar, to roll with. But I've gotten a lot more honestly than I ever would have thought out of being able to practice and learn and fail and try and succeed in my own without uh, like my own little sandbox. Mm -hmm. um, figuring out how I can take an idea and then come up with drills and and drills to practice it mm -hmm. so that I can actually practice putting it into play. Because again, knowing an idea and then not drilling, well, what's the point? I'll never have it. It will never, it'll never see the light of day.